In this video, I'll show you how to design and develop your talent job in order to perform incremental load. Right? It is also called as delta load. Uh, what it means is from your source database table, you extract only the uh, records that are newly inserted or updated in the source table. Right? You bring only those records and then uh, load it to your tar target. Right? So every time loading entire source record uh, into target is not a best solution. So uh, in most of the ETL projects, we follow incremental um, or delta load logic. So in my channel, we have already um, have two uh, videos. In the very first video, I was using ETL control table uh, to perform incremental load. And in the second video, uh, we have seen how to do a target lookup uh, to get the last successful you know, timestamp and perform the incremental load. Right, and here is the new way of doing it. So here is my talent studio uh, and this is a quick setup here. I'm, I'm using a pre-job here to establish a database connection. And here I'm using SQL Server as my uh, source. So I'm creating the connection and make sure you uh, set the auto commit. Otherwise uh, the data will not be committed. Uh, once this uh, DB connection is open, uh, all we have to do is for uh, doing any incremental load, we want to capture the last uh, successful timestamp. Right, so for that I have created a couple of context um, you know, variables here. The first one I'll be using last underscore success in order to hold the previously processed date timestamp. Right, and uh, the way I calculate uh, that is using my source table. Right, uh, unlike um, we have seen in other uh, you know, examples, uh, I'm not using the main table as my source. Instead, I'm, I'm creating a new uh, table called uh, underscore INC. Right. I'll, I, when we go to the database, I'll show you how to, you know, do this uh, particular setup. For now, just understand that uh, for this talent job, this is the source table. Okay. And this table uh, has a column called OP time. OP time is nothing but operational uh, last operation time, or you can just call it as is. I um, mean, uh, however you want. So all I want is, so let's say yesterday if I have uh, loaded my uh, data at 10, 10 p.m. So what uh, this will give me is, it, this uh, will return me um, 10 p.m. which is the max operation you know, time and store it in a particular context variable in the T Java row. Okay, so the source query uh, for this is select max of op time from uh, this particular source table. Right, I am... Um, setting that context uh, as last successful using this input um, you know column okay and i'm also just printing it so that when we run the job we know uh, exactly how do we um, you know extracted uh, the day timestamp right so this this particular setup is required for all types of incremental load logic so you choose any way uh, we will have to capture this last successful timestamp right and also the print statement will really help us in identifying or you know troubleshooting in case uh, if there is an issue uh, you know, during the execution. So you make sure you, uh, you know, print it and keep it in a log. So the next thing uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just doing another uh, SQL uh, input here, DB input for a SQL Server. Uh, so here is my source table, right? This is the table we um, you know got the uh, last max you know, successful timestamp, right? So I'm using the same table. I am just getting all the records from this particular uh, table. So this table will have all the product details, only the incremental data. I'll show you the table contents uh, in a while. So what I'm doing uh, here is I'm just reading the source uh, table, all the columns. And if you notice, uh, this uh, particular table has got a product ID, product name, type and price. So these are the original uh, fields. Along with that, uh, we have a separate uh, two columns. Um, the first one um, is the operation, whether it is an insert or update or delete. So in order to store that information, I have a new field. Uh, we will get to know when we get to uh, the SQL side, right? And OP time is the operation time. Uh, when an insert is made or update is made, this particular time will get uh, updated. So that based on this, we will identify. Okay, so once um, we have the data extracted, what we do is and, and also if you notice in our earlier videos we had a where clause wherein uh, we were 
doing the filter for uh, the last successful timestamp right i'll show you in a minute um, so that is not required in this new approach so let's uh, you know look at the team app setting here so i'm just dragging all the columns into two uh, separate outputs the first one is for insert and the second one is for updates okay and uh, as i mentioned the operation will always have uh, whether uh, that particular record um, is an insert or an update right so based on this filter condition i have created two new targets here right and um, what i'm going to do is i'll just um, you know blindly put uh, some t log row for this example okay and um, you can actually even have um, you know uh, actual target but in order to show you quick uh, i will just make uh, make use of uh, t log row here so all we have to do is uh, from this t map we'll create um, the output link and then attach it to the t log row similarly i'll take the update flow and then connect to another t log row so uh, let's go ahead and uh, sync the column first and also the table uh, output type is in a table and the same setting for the other one sync column uh, choose the table mode and uh, we will go ahead and save the job so what we have done is now from this insert and updates flow uh, we have connected to the t log row um, the next step here is to um, you know go back to uh, the database table and see how is the setting on the database side and then we will uh, come back to the talent job and uh, run it okay so now i'm on uh, the sql server uh, management studio right so this is my actual source uh, which will have data for uh, my product okay and uh, if you see um, both the tables are empty currently so this is the original source and this is the uh, incremental uh, table that we have uh, created i'll talk about this uh, in a minute now so the every time when we uh, run our talent job we are not actually hitting the main table right we're not hitting because you know this may have like millions of uh, records so we don't want to hit this table altogether instead what we want to do is uh, we will hit uh, a separate table which is completely um, you know separate table uh, with the suffix of you know inc here right uh, this needs to be done for all the table that you want to achieve uh, the incremental logic and of course uh, you will end up having more uh, records sorry more uh, tables um, in this approach but yeah i mean this is just a new way of you know doing it uh, but this is very effective in terms of um, you know processing uh, within the database so let's see uh, in this approach uh, how it works right so currently uh, both the tables are empty and uh, what i'm going to do is uh, i'll make insert into the main tables okay so the new uh, two records are affected and uh, if you go back and query uh, so we have two records here right and uh, let's query this table and see here even this table has got uh, two records okay uh, so these are the original records along with that i have an operation as i and op time as uh, the current uh, you know timestamp okay so now how the data from main table to this table has um you know propagated is based on a trigger so what i have done here is uh, from the main source table i have created a uh, trigger separate trigger here okay um, uh, so this is the trigger uh, on the main uh, source table um, which is product underscore details so here i am doing insert update and also delete i mean delete i am not really doing it here but you can give it a try um, what this means is create a trigger on this particular table and uh, this will be executed after any insert or update on the main table okay so this is the trigger logic and uh, in order to uh, you know do some uh, fine tuning here i have actually created a um, few variables um, so using these declared variables i'm going to capture the count uh, so these two are the system tables that comes with uh, trigger okay so i'm just taking the um, the count from the inserted system table and count from the deleted table and based on this condition uh, what i'm doing is uh, i have a new variable here action 
so this will tell me uh, whether um, there was an insert or an update or delete happening on the source uh, table okay and uh, this is the logic for it uh, I'm not gonna go uh, in very deep in detail all I'm doing is I'm checking if my source count uh, the insert count on the source table is equal to delete count then the operation is actually an update okay and if the insert count only if it is greater than zero then it is an insert right and uh, otherwise it is a delete so this is the logic I'm gonna give you the script for uh, the trigger and also uh, these tables um, so once you determine the action here I'll be making use of this action in my um, you know trigger table so all I'm doing is um, I'm, I'm using the this uh, original table you know where whenever there is an insert what will happen uh, the source system table will have the inserted records I am taking the same content here and I am passing this uh, action variable and also I am capturing the timestamp right so this gets inserted into this underscore inc table so this is the trigger table okay um, triggered table I would say this is the source table from the source table we are reading the uh, data and then inserting into our trigger table so once this um, triggered table is ready for use uh, so this table will actually act as an incremental uh, data point for our ETL job right and uh, let's see um, how this works on the talent side now and also if you see um, what we are currently doing is we're just incrementally you know reading the table and then loading into our target right so what what will happen the next time when when you insert a new record those records uh, will come again right so in order to uh, avoid that what we're gonna do is uh, we will implement uh, a delete logic here using the same last successful timestamp so if you notice here um, earlier we were just printing the last successful timestamp right um, I am doing another step here I have a new variable called delete uh, SQL uh, so this is where I'm saying delete from the incremental table where my op time is less than or equal to the last successful right if the job is run at 10 of 10 p.m. Um, the delete statement will also have 10 p.m. Uh, less than or equal to 10 p.m. so whatever records exist in that incremental table up to 10, 10 o'clock all those will be deleted right so I am preparing the delete statement and using it in um, you know the DB row component right so this uh, db row component will have uh, the context variable that in turn will have the delete statement so the way we connect uh, using this is uh, we will uh, choose on sub job ok because only uh, if this particular sub job succeeds only then we will have to delete the data from the incremental table okay so what will happen now uh, from the database we have these two records so the expectation is um, when when I run the job these two records uh, should be read uh, from the talent job and it should go to the insert um, target okay and then we will see an update uh, scenario so let's go ahead and run the job okay so now if you observe here carefully so it has read uh, the last successful uh, timestamp and also prepared uh, the delete statement here so let's check the output clearly okay so the last modified uh, timestamp is this and a delete um, statement is also ready and let's see what has happened here okay so two records have uh, been read and two records went to the insert uh, flow okay and also uh, it has passed to um, the delete statement let's look at uh, this particular example I'm gonna run the two uh, this thing so product underscore detail is my actual source right so the data from there should never get uh, you know truncated uh, whereas my uh, incremental table is uh, now clear because after the successful completion what it will do is uh, from the delete statement these uh, two records will be um, you know deleted from the incremental table so as a uh, next um, you know step here what we can do I'm gonna insert another record and also I'm going to update one record 
okay so let me do the insert first and also I am just setting uh, the product price to uh, so let's say you know some dummy record for product ID 1 so what I expect now here is um, there should be two records in our um, incremental table so the first one is the new record for that uh, operation is I and operation time is you know so and so and um, uh, so we did an update for uh, product ID 1 right so that product ID 1 is here and the changed price and the operation here is U right so let's go ahead and uh, run this job again so expectation this time is it should still read two records and one record for the insert and one record for the update flow 